In last week's video, I showed you a few ways of adding texture to your artwork in Adobe Illustrator. In this video, I will continue the process and show you some more advanced methods to utilize the grain effect. This time, we will be using it on gradient meshes and gradients along strokes. All right, so here we are in Illustrator and we will crack on continuing with the grain effect. This time, first of all, I'm going to apply it on this cactus here on the left. The difference will be that instead of using a linear, radial or freeform gradient, I'm going to use it on a stroke. And this is particularly useful if you have an object where you would like to emphasize the outline or the silhouette with your shading. So what we will do is, first of all, double click on the cactus because this is a group. That way I can isolate it and I can work a little bit easily without messing up anything else in the background. Notice here in the layers panel, we have three objects, the one in the middle and the two on the side. Now I'm going to start with the one in the middle. So just like before, the first step is to duplicate it. Command C, Command F or Control C, Control F. That's the shortcut for paste in front. So just so you can see once again, there's two objects now and the one on top, we will set to whatever color we want the shading to be. For this, I'm using the color panel, reducing brightness, increasing saturation a bit and maybe making the color slightly warmer or cooler in this case, I think that might look better. Let's do something like this. Once again, I can test how it's going to look. Yeah, I think that will work quite nicely for shading. Now make sure you keep the object selected and then we go to the transparency panel and click on make mask, invert mask, and also select the mask itself from this thumbnail and paste the object again inside here, control or command F. Now, instead of working with the fill, this time we will work with the stroke. And the quickest way to swap the stroke and the fill colors is to use the shortcut Shift X. Notice what happens here. I'm switching the existing color onto the stroke. So Shift X, once again, goes back and forth. And I'm doing this inside the mask. It's important, so it's not on the object. We're working inside the mask and you can always tell that by looking at the layers panel and if it says opacity mask and it only shows that particular object that you're working with, that means you are not affecting the object, you are working inside its mask. So now that we have this stroke set up, we need to find our gradient panel and click on linear gradient. And once that's added, because we are on a stroke, we can choose these additional options. And what we need is the apply gradient across stroke. That's probably the best way to work with it. Now, because the stroke at the moment is very tiny, it's only one point, we don't really see much difference. But as soon as I start increasing the value, by the way, if you hold down the shift key and click on these arrows, you can increase this value much faster. So it jumps up 10 points at a time. I'm going to set it around 20 points is good. This already makes the effect more visible, but currently we don't have the green effect on it. So what we need to do is to go up to the effect menu and from the texture category, we need to choose grain, which will bring us to this menu. And from last time, I mentioned this already, but I'm just going to repeat, make sure you choose this grain type, stippled, and then intensity and contrast set to whatever values you prefer. Click OK and it will be saved as a live effect. So we can always come back and make changes to it. So this is how it looks without the grain. And this is how it looks with the grain. Let me zoom a little bit closer so you can see it better once again before and after. Now, here are the things that you can make changes to. First of all, you can continue to increase the size of this and you can go to as high as you want. But what you can also do is to control the gradient. So if you want more of the shading, just simply drag the black point further in like so. And as you can see, it's already going to increase the intensity. You can also control the balance between the white and the black points which will also make a difference. And if it's still not strong enough and it's not to your liking, don't forget you can also change the color of your shading by going back to the object from the transparency panel and there make sure you select the fill color. So just simply press X this time, not Shift X. Press X to swap between which attribute is selected. And then here we can reduce the brightness and then maybe increase the saturation maybe also go towards more warmer tones or cooler tones, 
something like that. I think this looks quite good already. I feel like if we go back to the mask itself, maybe the point size can be reduced a bit to 20, 25. Yeah, I quite like this, but to make it simpler and be able to reuse the same settings on the other two branches of the cactus, all we have to do is to save this stroke setup as a graphic style, which we can do from this panel here. So while the object is selected, and more importantly, the opacity mask is selected, we click on new graphic style. There you go, it's already added for us. So now what we need to do is to switch back to the normal mode. So get out of the mask, select the other branch of the cactus, and then repeat the same steps as before. I'm going to show you again, just so we practice together. So Command C, Command F, that's a quick copy and paste in front. Change the color to something slightly darker. We could have used a swatch for this, but I'm just going to amend it here in the color panel. Then make mask, invert mask, click on the mask, paste in front again, Command F or Control F. And then once we have that ready, we just have to swap the colors from field to stroke, Shift X, select the stroke, and then choose also linear gradient and the gradient across stroke option. And now we can just apply our graphic style. So the last part of the technique is faster now because we don't have to set up that. And that's probably the most time consuming one. So that's why it's good to save it as a graphic style. You can see how quick that was. Let's just do this once more on the other branch. So I switch back, select that left branch, and then I'm going to copy, paste, go to the fill color, make it darker once again, slightly different, make mask, select mask, invert mask, paste, and then swap the color, select the stroke, linear, across and graphic style, boom, done. So of course it takes some practice to get to this speed, but you can see once you know what you're doing, you can be very quick and effective applying these effects. And I kept the most interesting way of using the grain effect for last, because now we will learn how to use it with a gradient mesh, which gives you the most intricate control that you can get in Illustrator. So for this, I'm going to leave the opacity mask of the cactus and also leave the isolation mode by double clicking outside. I'm going to scroll up and focus on the cutest part of the illustration, the head of this llama. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. So I'm going to click on this object first of all. I'm just going to drag it to the side so you can see that's the object we are going to work with. And it's important because depending on the outline of an object, the gradient mesh will behave differently. If you have a very complex shape, it might not work best, but for the type of complexity that you can see here is going to still work fine. The, normally the more anchor points you have on an outline, the more difficult it is for Illustrator to create a nice mesh with the gradient mesh feature. But you will see exactly what I mean once we get started. So now that we have our object selected, it actually starts very similarly to the previous techniques. And you guessed it, we have to duplicate it. So Command C, Command F or Control C, Control F. And then you guessed it again, we have to change the color to something, whatever we want to use this grain effect for. In this case, we want to use it again for shading. So I'm just going to go back to the HSB values and I will reduce the brightness, increase the saturation a bit, and uh, maybe also the hue adjust slightly. Yep, something like that I think is going to work for the shading. Then we will create the mask, invert the mask, select the mask, and paste in the same object in there. Now here's an important step that's different from the previous methods. Here we have to make sure that the mask is set to black fill. 
So make sure you click on black here in the color options. So without this, you won't really see much happening. But once you have this set up, you can apply the gradient mesh. So we can go to the object menu and choose create gradient mesh. Once that's selected, we will see it coming up already. And it's a really nice mesh that's created here on this fairly simple outline. But notice that I have options here. And the most important one is to change the appearance from flat to center. Now, flat is just simply going to use the same color on all the mesh points that you had as your basic or base fill color, while the to center means that it's going to create already almost like a three-dimensional shape by using brighter colors in the center and darker colors on the outline. So that's really cool. But we can also increase and decrease the rows and columns. And notice how adding more rows is going to create a more complex mesh. And the same thing happens with columns. You can use the up and down arrows here, by the way, to quickly see the difference. So you can control this very easily. But the good thing is that you can also add mesh lines later on, which I'm going to show you how to do. So for now, all we have to do is to set it up like this. And I'm going to click on OK. Now comes our good old friend, the grain effect. So we go to the effect menu. And since we already used it in this video and also in the previous episodes, I'm just simply going to use apply grain. So it's going to use the same exact settings as before. And although it seems like a bit more complex way to set it up, it's actually not that complex at all. Because you can see we are already at the point where we can adjust the grain effect. So we can now select these mesh points using the direct selection tool. Shortcut is A. With that, you can move these points around. And notice that as I'm moving the points around, I am affecting the spread of the gradient, or the grain in this case. And what you can do is to change the color for each of these mesh points. And notice that the color on the edges are going to be black while this transitional mesh points will be gray and the one in the middle is going to be white. So that's how it creates that effect. In the middle, it's completely empty while wherever there's black or gray is going to start showing the grain. So if I select this other point up here and instead of using gray, I set this to white, see immediately it creates a different effect. I can again select this point and either just drag it around or I can also set this to white. And then we have a similar effect to using the previous technique where we had the shading around the outline of the cactus. But what's different here is that we have much more intricate control and I can have a different effect moving under the eyes, for example, than further up here. So if I want these points to come further out, I can do that very easily. And I can move these points exactly under the eyes, maybe something like that. And also instead of using gray here, I can set them to black, which increases the intensity of the effect only on those specific areas. Now, if you run out of mesh points and you need more control, all you have to do is to press U on the keyboard, which gets you to the mesh tool. And with that, you can click anywhere on the outline. Now, if you click on an existing line, like in this case, I clicked in the middle where there was already a vertical line. This is only going to give me additional points here on the side, but I'm going to undo this so you can see what's difference. If I click in a completely empty area, it's also going to create an additional vertical line, not just a horizontal mesh line. This way, I'm adding a lot more points to control. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the left side. And now I can select this point maybe here and set that to white. Also select this point, set that to white. And then I can move these points around and be even more specific where I want these points to be. So let's take a look without this effect on the head. So if I come back to the object from the transparency panel, we can find our object here in the layers panel. By the way, whenever you have something selected and you have loads of things in the layers panel, you can just click on this little locate object, which will jump to the selected object really useful technique. So now I can see without the effect and with the effect. So 
there you go. This was the most complex setup with the grain effect technique, but still, once you know how to use it, it's not that difficult at all. So if you learn all of these four different ways of using the grain effect, you will have all the methods you need depending on the shape of the object and also depending on whether you would like to have a highlight or shading applied to it. So once again, just to see what we achieved, here is the illustration without any of these grain effects, and here it is with the full shading applied on all the objects. If you enjoyed these tutorials and if you like the way I'm teaching and you would like to learn more and master Illustrator to the level that I'm showing you here, I would recommend to check out my Illustrator Masterclass, which is a bestseller course on many platforms. You can find the link in the description below to access that. But if you want to learn more about other applications, I have loads of other courses which you can access all by becoming a member. You can find more information about this in the links in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.